last night. She'll lead off this Tennessee Lady Vols starting lineup. McKenna Gibson, Zeta Pooney, Riley West rounding out that top four. Malloy swinging at the first offering and she will lead things off with a first pitch single. And the reason why I highlighted Kiki Malloy was just the importance of the player that she is, especially coming off of a game like yesterday, uncharacteristic for Tennessee to get run rolled. So someone like Kiki Malloy in that leadoff spot to pass on that extra energy to her team is huge. McKenna Boo Gibson now up for Tennessee. Went 0 for 3 last night, but had a really good series against Georgia and in fact is having a tremendous year leading this Tennessee team. Batting average hits and RBI. And one thing I can say about these Mississippi State pitchers it's just they vary speed so well. They'll throw something hard, but Aspen Wesley, the success she had yesterday with her off speed. Bouncing ball over to short. And Edwards able to make the play, get Malloy out at second. And I like the lead outs, but Keith Malloy puts a little bit more pressure on the D because she is so fast, but the freshman up the middle, Edwards and Hawkins work well together. I like how Hawkins holds this up. Zeta Pooney, now the batter. The Oklahoma transfer, designated player in this Tennessee lineup. As we see, first team selection last year, second team the year before. She spent her first year and won a Women's College World Series title with the Sooners. Now bringing the big bat for Tennessee. This one foul and caught for out number two. Number five, Riley West. Paige Cook there in the outfield. Sacco center field, St. Clair in left. You heard about a couple of those freshmen on the infield who have been so tremendous and really grown into the season for Mississippi State. Boy, the Lady Vols are coming out swinging. This one's off the wall for Riley West. And if Tennessee was coming out, Danielle, to prove a point, well, they're starting off pretty strong with the way they are attacking this first inning. Well, in going through this, this stat line of Tennessee, they don't tend to swing at first strikes very often. They usually take a strike, but you've seen right out of the gate hitter swinging early. Kiki Malloy with that leadoff base hit first pitch, and then you see Riley West crushes that first pitch to left field, gets the first run up on the board for Tennessee. An RBI double, and they are looking for more. Get out of here. A home run off the bat of the catcher, Sophia Nugent. Seventy six point three percent of the time Nugent. You see her swing early knowing hey seeing the trend of the hitters getting hits right out of the gate how that has to feel so good if you're Tennessee coming out and laying it on them thick at the top of the first inning. Probably allows for them to take a little bit of a big deep breath as well. Only two hits yesterday that they had off Aspen Wesley. A very different feeling to the start of this game, although Tennessee did take the lead in that. Destiny Rodriguez, the batter. And if I'm Josie Marin, I'm aware that they're swinging early in the count, so I'm a little bit more particular about where I'm throwing that pitch right out of the gate, knowing I can't get away with something over the heart of the plate or on the white because they are more of free swingers with just a different offensive plan it seems, and what they had yesterday. Three-nothing. 
Number four, Tennessee, taking an early lead here in the top of the first. Big swing, ball in the air, and foul. This is, I think, probably the longest at bat so far, right, Danielle? I don't know that there were more than <laughs> two pitches thrown to any previous batter. Yeah, I I love the change up here by Tennessee was switching up that plan of attack. Like I said, I went through their lineup and noticed the trend that a good chunk of them love to take those first pitch strikes. And as a pitcher, former pitcher, I'm like, man, that means I can throw you a, a cookie down the heart of the plate. But turn the dial up a little bit. Started up with Kiki Malloy, swinging first pitch, that base hit. And I think someone like Kiki, why I had her highlighted in the lineup, she just is so good in that leadoff spot and just passes on that extra confidence to the rest of the lineup. 3-1 to Rodriguez in the dirt. She'll take the base. Oh, to have been a fly on the wall in the Tennessee locker room after that run rule loss last night. And even when you and I were talking, Danielle, I love the way you put it about the, uh, the fire that you thought Tennessee would probably be coming out with after having to get through that type of a game. Well, it's not fun to get run ruled, let alone game one of a series. I think Tennessee coming into this and just kind of that fire in Mississippi State's bellies, it just was a, a like I said, they were on a mission. I think they almost caught Tennessee on their toes a little bit. But I also think that there are games that you can go into where sometimes there's a lot that goes right for one team and not a lot for the other. And that was kind of the perfect storm for Mississippi State making all these defensive plays. Um, I can't say that I thought a run rule was on the table. Just based on Carlin Pickens' success in the SEC, her numbers, she was number three nationally in ERA heading into the weekend. I mean, she's a force to be reckoned with, right? So when you have a series like this, you aren't expecting that to be the case, but Coach Sam Rickett said the amount of prep work that they did leading up to this weekend for Carlin Pickens. I mean, they had the pitching machine at 35 feet. <laughs> well, whatever they did, it worked. They were able to shoo Pickens out after just a couple of innings last night. And now two outs. Tennessee taking a three-run lead here in the top of the first. Taylor Panel. The sophomore right fielder currently at the plate. One, two count. Now initially, you'd look at this matchup and you think, all right, we've got a really elite pitching team against a really great hitting team in Mississippi State. Well, offense won out in game one. Called third strike. Well, one of the career NCAA leaders in a lot of pitching categories. Strikeout, she's number one. Wins, she's top three. And a lot of that was done at Bowling Green. But now taking on this Mississippi State lineup led by Sierra Sacco, the transfer from Louisiana Tech, who has been a terrific addition in that leadoff, stop, leadoff spot for the SEC's best offense in conference play. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. She has been such a spark in that leadoff spot. And I think it's it's the confidence piece of what Coach Sam Ricketts said. It's just she loves to go deep into counts and really work a pitcher right out of the gate. And like I said about Kiki Malloy in that leadoff spot, there's just this different energy that someone can go up and have a good quality AB and pass that on to the rest of her teammates. and. Heck of a pickup for Mississippi State in the transfer portal with a player like Sierra Sacco. Was the Conference USA Freshman of the Year a couple of years ago, two-time all-first team all-conference at Louisiana Tech. Went two for three last night in the win. Full count. Sacco puts it on the ground and gets to first with no problem. So leadoff runner aboard for the Bulldogs. 
Well, and almost deja vu of Kiki Malloy in that leadoff spot, just punching it right through that 3-4 hole. Sacco does the same thing, but works it to a 3-2 count. Nadia Barbary, now the batter, the sophomore third baseman for the Bulldogs. Hit her team leading 15th double of the season. That also is a number that leads the SEC. Did that last night. One thing I love about Peyton Gottschall, I mean, she pumps strikes really early in account, 63% of the time. And her numbers are actually up from last season, 61% she was throwing first pitch strikes in 23. This year, 63.7% of the time, she is gonna get ahead of a hitter. And you can't express it with that off speed. Makes it a lot more tricky on a hitter. Now, Barbary had done a good job, got it to an 0-2 count before getting that first ball from Gottschall. And that swing will sit her down. First strikeout of the day for the graduate for the Lady Balls. The first, first rise ball thrown by Gottschall ends up being for the strikeout. And this is where you want this pitch to be at this count. You want to climb that ladder when you have two strikes. Big time strikeout for Gottschall after the leadoff hit by Sacco. And maybe some confidence coming into what should be a great matchup here with Madison Kennedy, the fifth year Bulldog ranking in the top five in the country in batting average. She was hitting over 400 coming into the series, actually had a streak snapped of 25 games where she'd reached, didn't do that last night, although she did have a sack fly, and now she's hitting a mere 395. And a player that didn't even know she wanted to come back for a fifth year. It's what Coach Sam Ricketts said on the call, that she wasn't even convinced she was going to. And she just kind of, you know, Coach Ricketts said she sat around, she had said that she prayed on it, and there were some certain things that allowed for her to come back, and she said she is the most down-to-earth, silliest kid now. It's almost <laughs> like a different mentality knowing that it's your last year and coach Sam Ricketts just talks so highly of Kennedy and how hard she works but I think the one thing that stood out to me was just that she's gotten to know player time card will be expired it gives you a different appreciation for the sport Kennedy hitting it deep back to the wall and in the glove of Malloy in center field So a long out number two off the bat of Madison Kennedy. Could use a little more wind to help her out there. Not much <laughs> yeah, going not, on today. <laughs> not getting much help. See all the teal, Tennessee with the teal tops and then the teal accents for Mississippi State, part of the All for Alex weekend across the SEC. Two outs now, one on for the catcher, Jesse Blaine. Those are such good spots by Peyton Gottschall. She's just owning that inner half to the righties, establishing, hey, this is my plate. I'm going to throw a good located pitch. I love that she's getting that pitch called. I feel like the trend that I've seen over the last couple weeks it's just been a lot tighter zones. And I think as a pitcher trying to figure out, hey, right out of the gate, I have to establish the strike zone. If I can get maybe half a ball off the plate and continue to own that spot, it just makes everything a little bit harder to hit. And you see she's really being able to get that inner half called for a strike. 0-2 pitch, swung on and missed. So a couple of strikeouts in the inning. Mississippi State. Ranked number 16 this week, and Tennessee number four. Leading off the inning, the first baseman, Julia Katsoyanopoulos. Second year with the Tennessee program after transferring from Arizona. And that was quick. 
And it's almost unfair with the new pitching coach, Taryn Mowat McKinney, in the dugout. She was actually on the staff at Arizona in New Katsoyanopolis. <laughs> so sometimes you're like, man, the pitching coach, she's going to be over there calling pitches. She knows me well. well she has certainly been a huge addition to this Mississippi State staff, Taryn Mowat McKinney. And a strikeout to start off the inning for Josie Marin. This is actually the first time that I've seen Marin climb the ladder. Love to see it. Almost looks like she took a little something off it, but so good at understanding, hey, what the counts are, when I need to throw certain pitches, and quickly jumped ahead of Katsoyanopoulos so she can play with her a little bit. Top of the second from Starkville. Tennessee with one out now at the bottom of the lineup. This is Laura Mueller, junior shortstop from Chapel Hill, Tennessee. Three nothing lead for the Lady Vols. But when we got a chance to talk with Coach Sam Ricketts prior to this game and we just add, talked about that added addition of Pitching coach Taryn Moat McKinney, she actually said Josie Marin and, and Aspen Wesley were a part of that selection process. They were in there, they were able to ask questions. And I loved that piece because yeah, as a coach, you want someone that you can gel with, but more importantly, these young women need to be able to mesh well with someone too that they're gonna be spending a lot of time with. So we thought that was a fun little nugget that we got, but to me yeah. it's, when I ask Coach Ricketts, it's not like it's anything tr truly mechanical that is the biggest difference. It's the mindset. And that's something, I mean, I competed against Taryn when she played for the University of Arizona. It was right in my time. I had played at Washington. We played against each other. I was and saw that World Series in 2007. I was there with the Washington Huskies. And just watching what she was able to do was really incredible. And she's got to like the way that her sophomore, Josie Marin, is starting off two strikeouts. That'll do. Well, and the mindset piece is probably the most important piece you need to have out there. So the first thing that I notice is she's just crushing the inner half and getting a good job with the location. But it's the difference in how she started in the first inning and how she came out in the second inning with just a completely different plan, hitting some better corners. It's almost like you're seeing Tennessee not swing as early in the count. Now Tennessee's All-American, their all-time home run leader, Kiki Malloy, top of the lineup. And we welcome those of you just joining us. This is the second inning in Starkville. Kiki Malloy and Tennessee already. Good. I mean, they only had two hits in yesterday's game over five innings. And for a team that brought back pretty much everyone, but Ashley Rogers, that Women's College World Series team offensively, when you get two hit, that, that's a statement for Mississippi State and pitching what they were able to do. So. I like how Tennessee has looked to have turned it around with a different offensive approach. McKenna Gibson now at the plate. Jen Hildreth, Danielle Laurie on the call. Happy to have you with us. As Danielle was just talking about, the first game of this series went the way of Mississippi State by virtue of a 9-1 run rule victory over the Lady Vols. That was just the third conference loss for Tennessee all season. Three zero count now for Gibson. He reached on a fielder's choice, came around to score in the first. He's swinging this time. Foul ball, the call. Home plate umpire love, quickly out. I love a green light three zero hack. That's what you saw from Boo Gibson. Something in her wheelhouse. 
Coach Karen Weekly has that confidence in a player like McKenna Gibson, a.k.a. Boo. <laughs> And I'm glad, Danielle, as she sees uh, called strike two, bring the count full. You reminded me that it is Boo Gibson. You know, it might say McKenna <laughs> on the birth certificate, but as her dad said at one point, well, Boo Gibson, or, or actually, was that, was that the coach? Was that Coach Weekly? One of them said, that sounds like a ball player's name. We're going to run with it. And Boo is retired this time around, but. That first inning. Peyton Gottschall. He graduate pitcher in the circle for Tennessee. And those are some of the numbers and impressive feats from that win last night for Mississippi State. Their 14th run rule victory of the season. That's a program record. And it's the first time they've done it over a top five opponent. Well, in a team that made it to the Super Regional two years ago and then doesn't even make it to the postseason last year. Like, this was a team that was fueled by that, knowing, hey, like, we had a taste of what it was like. And Aspen Wesley being that pitcher that was able to go into that Florida State Regional back in 2022 and to be able to do what she did, it almost seems kind of, I mean, crazy that they didn't even make the postseason last year, right, with a run like that. So I think this was a team that really had to set the bar significantly higher in this 2024 season of expectations and to me it's just the explosiveness of that freshman class the confidence and the youth i think is such a good combo with some of those older players they gel well madison kennedy aquana brownlee what they're able to do in that leadership department to be able to help develop those freshmen um but when freshmen can come in and make an impact like mississippi states have and they're fearless like that it is so fun to watch Paige Cook pops it up in the infield. Easy catch for out number one. Well, and Peyton Gottschall to me is that fearless type pitcher. Her energy is contagious. She throws a ton of first pitch strikes 63% of the time. She is coming at you early in a count. And then she can toy with you. And that's what we saw her do last inning. She really mixes planes well. But to me, it's the difference with being able to establish that inner half on the righties, but then be able to mix that curveball away. She'll climb the ladder when she needs to, but for the most part, she is gonna go east and west and upstairs when the count is right. Talk about the freshman. This is Ella Wesolowski, the freshman designated player spot in the lineup today for Mississippi State. And it is one, two, three in the lineup here. Wesolowski and then Kylie Edwards followed by Salen Hawkins. Six, seven, eight spot of the order. Three freshmen in a row for Mississippi State. This one hit deep and into the glove of Malloy in center field. Wind may be picking up just a little bit, but not enough to get that ball out of the park and away from the All-American in center field, Kiki Malloy. West in left, panel in right for that Tennessee defense in the outfield. And here is Kylie Edwards, the freshman shortstop for the Bulldogs. And Kylie Edwards yesterday, three big RBIs in that run rule game. And I asked Coach Ricketts, like, why are majority of your freshmen with their offensive numbers down at the bottom half of the lineup? And she said, well, number one, we're taking a little bit of pressure off by putting them down where they potentially get some better pitches early on in their ABs, but it they're scrappy. So it's almost like it doesn't feel like there's a bottom half of the lineup just based on how they've been able to perform and just kind of cool hearing from the head coach, Sam Ricketts, just how much those freshmen have meant to this program. You don't always see freshmen come in and just make such an impact, right? You'll have some that come in that are playing behind a fifth year senior, junior, but it just goes to show, I mean, that recruiting class that they were able to get with those athletes and the long-term success that Mississippi State is going to have over the years, they're a dangerous team. 0-2 pitch, misses outside. Sam Ricketts in her fifth year as head coach. 
at Mississippi State, had that first NCAA Super Regional in program history, as you talked about a couple of years ago in 2022, and then no postseason last year. <laughs> Running catch made out in left, and that is three batters through for Tennessee in the third. And you mentioned that defense that will try to get a glove on the ball if Pooney gives him the chance. Barbary, Edwards, Hawkins, and Kennedy going around from third to first for the Bulldogs. As you said, all former shortstops at one point or another in their careers. Well, not all the pitches that you can see, that drop ball to Zaina Pooney is the hardest for her to hit. I mean, she has a .95 average against drop ball pitchers, which goes to show it can be a little bit more of a tough task against a pitcher that can drop it off the table like Josie Marin. And I just always think the amount of information that is out there in comparison to when I played, I'm happy to have played in the time that I played because <laughs> I would not want hitters to have every count that I throw certain pitches on and the percentages of or averages that they're hitting, right? Like as a pitcher, I, I would be going in and knowing the data of like, hey, Zeta Pooney has, you know, a .95 average on a drop. I'm gonna kind of pick that weakness of hers apart because that's my best pitch. And that's why at times I feel like you're seeing the offense piece sometimes be a little bit more dialed in than the pitching just because there's so much information for these hitters on the pitchers and the pitching machines and the hack attacks and So maybe what you're saying, Danielle, is now the hitters are, are getting a little bit of that extra info that, that you like to have the advantage of when you were in the circle. Yeah, I don't love that. <laughs> I don't love how it's more of a hitter's game than it ever has been. <laughs> Full count here to Pooney. And she keeps on battling, fouling it off. Three, two, misses, and that will put Pooney aboard with the leadoff walk. You see Missouri beat Florida right out of the gate, game one. Kentucky beat West. Georgia. Um, Auburn ended up beating LSU game one. Um, and then some outsets, upsets outside of the SEC. I mean, Texas beat Baylor 14-1, and you look at BYU game two of the series they beat Oklahoma so they will have the rubber match today Iowa State beat Oklahoma State I mean across the board this is stuff I love teams may not love it but I think when you can have these types of upsets it just makes for an even dicier sweeter mayhem coming our way before we know it Another pop up from West out into the stands there. Yeah, I was going to say it is not even mayhem yet, but maybe giving you a little taste of that in early April. I always love a good souvenir. O2 count. West had an RBI double in the first. It almost seems like Josie Marin is kind of one of those like junk ball pitchers, right? When you think of MLB a little bit, kind of those knuckleball pitchers that tend to play around a little bit, can keep the ball down in the zone, can change speeds well. And Gets she has the strike it. out of West. And Josie Marin's not going to blow it by you with the velo, but it's just, see that ball drop off the table. I mean, she worked Riley West. West battled for a bit, and then that's a pitch that you have to be able to in the moment say, hey, I can't do anything with it. I know it's dropping off. I got to take it. But it looks so good. And this one comes inside and hits Sophia Nugent. So there will be no repeat of her two-run home run in the first, but it is another base runner for Mississippi State to have to contend with. Pinch runner over at first has come on, Katie Taylor, junior out of Noonan, Georgia, pinch running in place of Pooney.
One out, two on for Destiny Rodriguez. Sophomore at Alive Oak, Texas. Was the first to really take an at-bat beyond one or two pitches in that first inning for Tennessee. I'm curious, Danielle, if it's more that Josie Marin has changed what she's doing or is Tennessee changing what they're doing and being a little more patient at the plate? This one hit right back to Marin. She'll get the lead runner at third. Going for two. Yes, it's in time. Double play to end the inning for this Mississippi State defense. Mississippi State defense to me throughout these last couple games has been so fun. Josie Marin knows there's a force at third. She goes Barbary all the way to Kennedy. Wow, Mississippi State flashed the leather. Talk about the symptoms and help with awareness of ovarian cancer and to get that early detection and give yourself a better chance for a good outcome. When I think also understanding that a lot of those symptoms are, are things that people feel a good chunk of the time if you are a, a female. So it's being aware that it's better to be safe than sorry. And if you feel something, it, you might as well go and get checked out just because it is the smart thing to do. And I, days like today make me feel so very fortunate that I get to be on the call just with the history of Alex Wilcox and what she meant to this Mississippi State team and the fact that they get to honor her every single year like it really I know Alex's parents are in the stands like it's a bittersweet day for Mississippi State that they get to celebrate someone that they love so much and bring awareness to a really big cause and I know also Beth Tarina, the head coach at um, LSU her mom had been diagnosed with ovarian cancer and it was detected early and um, she's still kicking and they always do this teal walk every single year of this weekend and it's just a really really special day so you'll see plenty of teal everywhere you look now you understand why and why it's so important meanwhile Salen Hawkins here the batter for Mississippi State still making our way through the first time through the order for the Bulldogs 8-9-1 with Hawkins starting things off. A lot of pitches from Peyton Gottschall, Danielle, coming inside. Well, and I, I also think, too, you, you look at Hawkins, that last pitch, right? She's on the dish. And to me, an experienced pitch, pitcher has no fear saying, hey, if you're going to stand on the plate, I'm still going to establish the inner half because that's my plate. It ain't yours. And that's what you're seeing when she steps in, how close she is to the plate. But... That to me is, is why I think Peyton Gottschall is so special for Tennessee with, with obviously Carlin Pickens, we know her success. She throws the ball hard, but the yin to the yang is having a Peyton Gottschall and her experience and energy that she's able to bring to this Tennessee team. And I think it's someone you can rely on and in a situation like this, and to me, it is what is a must win for Tennessee after yesterday. She's someone that you want out there. <laughs> so cute. Another good souvenir. <laughs> so you have your crossbody Bulldog Lulu fan. bag. I'm of sure course. you got your Sharpies in there to get the ball signed after the game. You know they're well prepared. <laughs> so cute. Meanwhile, this first at bat just continues on here in the bottom of the third for Salen Hawkins, the freshman out of Phoenix, Arizona. One, two count. Looked like it was right down the middle, and it is a little delayed third strike call there from our home plate umpire, Shane Jackson. So good. Just hammered and peppered Hawkins in on the hands time after time after time. And that's what it does. It opens up that outer half. I like that spot at that 0-2 count. Those backward Ks are hard to come by these days when you're facing these types of offenses. So it goes to show pitching backwards at times to hitters is successful and Gottschall, fire me up. Third strikeout of the afternoon so far for Peyton Gottschall as Bradley St. Clair steps to the plate, the fifth year senior from Sand Rock, Alabama. 
can provide a real spark at the bottom of this Bulldog lineup. And Sinclair, I mean, she was hitless going into yesterday's game. She was hitless her last seven games. And for her to be able to go in and do what she did yesterday, off it, like defensively, she was money in left field, made a great grab, but stepped into the box and crushed a 73 mile an hour pitch and punched it to the left side. I mean, that to me is key, right? Like it doesn't matter, hey, the history, I'm struggling. I haven't been able to get a hit. It's, hey, I'm gonna step into the box and be the best teammate and an absolutely attack mode mentality. And that's something that coach Sam Ricketts really talks about with this Mississippi State team and their selflessness and the leadership of the older vets, knowing that some of these young bucks have come in and taken a couple positions. 0-2 pitch, swung on and missed. So that's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Gottschall. And just pay attention to when Gottschall has had to climb the ladder. And it's when she's thrown a good chunk of pitches. But that, to me, is a pitch that you look at as a viewer and go, hey, why are you swinging at that? You can't touch that. But it has such good tight spin that when you're battling pitches down in the zone and are almost at that two-swing approach, Sometimes you can get a little bit out of your shoes and see something spinning that looks like it's over the heart of the plate. And it feels like Gottschall's really getting in a groove now. First pitch, a strike to Sierra Sacco, who singled in her first at bat. Well, and as a hitter, when I'm stepping in the box, I know 63% of the time she's coming at me with a strike. So I'm, unless it's a pitch I'm hunting in and she goes away, as a hitter, I would want to go in with that kind of straight up attack mode mentality and not allow for her to get ahead of me easily because then that's when she really starts to divvy up the strike zone a little bit. So it's I want to hammer a pitch early in the zone that I can do something with. Gotchel coming in with a 1.26 ERA coming into this series. That ranks second in the SEC. Obviously, Carlin Pickens had the best, one of the best ERAs in the country, but let's not forget what a, a second part of this one-two punch in the circle Peyton Gottschall really is for Tennessee. And it's about knowing that you're not out there alone, right? I think Carlin Pickens and the performance she had yesterday was un uncharacteristic of her, but Gottschall to be able to come in and do what she's been doing like this gives picking some confidence for sure. Our reigning SEC Coach of the Year, Tennessee Lady Ball Head Coach Karen Weekly joining us now. All right, Coach, we've got to know, what was the message to your team after game one coming into this game today? You, you got to respect the game. You got to respect every single day you come out here, and I think that was a real wake-up call and kind of a gut check, and today's all about pride. Coach, I, I have to ask, obviously a very different start in the circle here than yesterday with Peyton Gottschall, but talk to me a little bit about her and what you can appreciate about the energy that she brings. Peyton's a warrior. I mean, she just is, she's like, give me the ball, let's go. And she'll throw a pitch and she just lets it go as soon as it's out of her hand. And that's what allows her to kind of play with that confidence and play with that energy. She doesn't worry about results. She's just gonna get after you and whatever happens, happens. <laughs> well, so far so good. Great start for her and for your team. Thank you so much. Thank you. It is funny that she mentioned that because that was one of the things that she did say on the call that she wanted more of what Peyton Gottschall has to rub off on Carlin Pickens. And obviously there's a difference in age, Gottschall being that senior and Carlin Pickens only being a sophomore, but Pickens has learned a lot from her in the sense of it's okay to show your emotion and get excited. And I think that there's something so bittersweet about respecting the fact that once I let a pitch go, there's nothing I can control other than the pitch that I throw, right? So. I love that Coach Weekly talked to us about that, and you're seeing that pass on, that energy from Peyton Gottschall to this Tennessee team today. Very different start than yesterday. Taylor Panel leads things off with a hit, fifth of the game for Tennessee. And it's one of those things when you're talking about the pitchers and their mentality, Danielle, that it seems so simple, but it's not. Not really when it comes to your mentality. That's why being a pitcher is a really hard thing to do. It's more mental than I think most people can even understand and the importance of really working on the skill set that you need when the going gets tough, right? Like what are you doing behind the scenes, the mental, you know, sports psychs that you potentially have access to at these universities. Like 
the more information that you can give them to sharpen that tool, I mean, then they feel invincible when they're out there because they can respect both ends of, of what can happen, the good and the bad. It's the pitchers that don't know how to deal with the hard or go through the lumps that really end up struggling the most. But the gotcha way is once I let that ball go, there's nothing else I can control. And I, I love that that helps her in her mind for sure. Soyanopoulos trying to lay down the bunt. She is retired, but the runner advances to second. And to be clear, I don't think there's anything easy about being a pitcher in case that came off wrong. <laughs> I have so much respect for all of you who ever step in the circle and manage all that you do. And love that hearing about the mentality of, of Peyton and what she's brought. Tennessee coming out swinging again. This one hit to short. And they are looking for two. This Mississippi State defense has been behind some of that offense, which has really been their calling card all season. Nadia Barbary, the leadoff hitter in the two spot, but she'll lead off the inning for the Bulldogs. They have not had a runner aboard since the first at bat of the game. Sarah Sacco, Gottschall has retired nine straight since that time. Well, in this second time through is where you want to see a team like Mississippi State adjust. And you look at that first time through and Gottschall and her success on the inner half to those righties and really being able to jam them up. Pop up here to center. Malloy gloves it for out number one. But like I said, it's, it's a pitcher like Gotcha where you know she's going to get ahead of you early in the count and try to mess around with you. So when you're stepping in the box and you get a pitch that you can do something with and you want to swing early in the count, she's the type of pitcher to do that with. But the one thing about her is she doesn't miss her location much. She hits really good spots and averages, you know, 65 miles an hour. She's not bringing in the Carlin Pickens heat, but it's her spin. She can spin it and go away with that curveball, which... She's a little surprised she didn't get that for a strike, and I'm over here thinking the same thing, but. <laughs> Pitch in the dirt, two balls now to Madison Kennedy, one of the top hitters in the country. Brings a ton of power to the plate, is looking for her first hit of this series, though. Flew out in her first at bat. Pops this one up, foul territory, and she is retired. Well, Tennessee fans, stick around because we've got more volunteer sports coming your way right here on the SEC Network, the fourth-ranked Tennessee baseball team hosting LSU at Lindsey Nelson Stadium in game two of that three-game series. Coverage beginning at 5.30 Eastern, 4.30 Central. Two outs now, Jesse Blaine swinging early in the count, puts this over the wall. That Mississippi State offense has awoken. Jesse Blaine swinging first pitch CCs. This is a pitch that's elevated. Not a terrible spot by Peyton Gottschall. If anything, I'd say, hey, a little bit more on a corner, but she goes up and gets this pitch. Six home run of the season for Jesse Blaine. Trying to pass on a little bit of momentum here to the Bulldogs with a couple quick outs, but Jesse Blaine, Blaine says, no way. Puts this game within two. Paige Cook, now the batter for the Bulldogs. And you figured it was only a matter of time, even though this is a great strength on strength matchup, the strength of Tennessee's pitching, the strength of Mississippi State's batting. You figured you'd see them be able to find a little bit of success at some point, and Blaine doing that with her sixth home run of the year. This is a tremendous two out team 
as well, by the way. Some of the top numbers in the SEC when it comes to two out RBI. One one to Cook is popped up. Rodriguez calling for it, ends the inning, but not before Je Mississippi State head coach Samantha Ricketts joining us now. Coach, all right, first, congratulations on a tremendous start to this series. What was working well last night, and then what do you see from today's game so far? Um, I mean, I think it's the same thing, swinging within a plan. And I thought the offense really did a good job of being disciplined yesterday and executing a game plan and you know, working to find that today and trust it a little bit, which you know, it's a little tougher to do when you're down early. It's got to quit pressing and make sure we're just trusting ourselves and go out and getting a good pitch that we can handle. Coach, a day like today, very special for your program, all for Alex. She played with the Bulldogs. Talk to me a little bit about the importance of a day like today. Today is so special, special for us just to see across the country so many teams, SEC and beyond, wearing teal in honor of Alex. And, you know, it's so much bigger than Alex as well. And the more that we can do to spread awareness of the symptoms and just help the next young woman and detect it early, it makes it all worth it. And so we're grateful. We love to honor Alex and just the bright light that she was and thankful for everybody around the country doing the same. Well, we're so appreciative of that as well. And just so your players know, we just got a good look at your shoes. I know okay, that was they were very <laughs> worried about the shoes. So I'm glad I got their time. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Hail State. Staying within a plan though, that, uh, seems to be what's been key for this Mississippi State team. And obviously we know that what Sam Ricketts has done in a career as a player, and then even when she was an assistant coach before becoming head coach at Mississippi State, she knows how to rev up an offense. And that's one thing that she said, she's had a lot more time now to be able to work with the offense. She felt like last year she was doing all these different tasks at once and she's got a lot more help this year from her staff where she can solely focus on being able to do those little things. And that was one of the questions that I, I wanted to talk to her about. There's a big offensive difference from last year, this year, especially with some of their players. You look at Madison Kennedy and Barbary and their numbers and the difference. And she, she said, honestly, last year, we just didn't have access to a facility. Ours was under construction. We're having to do all the BP on our field. And she said, this year we have that clubhouse where we can go in get a lot of reps and that's one thing that has been the difference maker for this offense is being able to get more reps and for the little ears that are paying attention to that a lot of it is <laughs> the stuff that you do when no one's watching that work throughout the week yeah practice but what are you doing on top of that and they have access to that brand new facility and it's helped them ball bobbled just a little bit by Barbary and that was just enough of an opening for Malloy to slip through. She reaches for a third straight time in this game. And this slight little slip up by Barbary, it, it's not gonna happen with Kiki going up the line. She's way too fast. Obviously a threat to steal, has 20 stolen bases on the year. You field that cleanly, you make a throw, I think you're gonna get her, but not when you make a little bit of a bobble. So the error has Malloy aboard, and now Boo Gibson stepping to the plate. No for two so far today, hitting 360 on the season. Defensive change for Mississippi State. Burnley coming, or Bernie, excuse me, coming on out in right field. Jaden Bernie, junior, taking the place of Cook. And you just feel, Danielle, this is really an important time of this game here for Mississippi State to try to hold things down. They just got some momentum with that home run, the bottom half of the previous inning. But now can they hold this Tennessee offense at bay? A difficult way to start. And starting fresh up at the top of the lineup, right? It, it some, sometimes comes down to those little defensive errors that can lead to potentially big innings, right? And, if you as Pooney steps to the plate with two on now, there is the pinch runner, Amanda Allen. 
came on for Gibson at first. Pooney, her team's RBI leader the last two seasons. Cranks this one foul. When you take a look at Zeta Pooney the second time, oh, she's got to come up, excuse me, her third AB, she's definitely backed off the plate a little bit. I think sometimes it's knowing that the pitcher that's out there is a specialist at your weakest point, meaning that drop ball is a pitch that Zeta Pooney does struggle with. But what adjustments can I make in the box? Because I know that she's going to come at me with that pitch. It's her bread and butter pitch. She spins it well on both sides of the plate. So as a hitter, it's being willing to kind of get out of your comfort zone with the adjustments that need to be made and having confidence that even though that's a pitch, man, I struggle with at times in a situation where your team needs you, runner on first and second, the more insurance runs that you're able to get, the later on in the game gives your pitcher gotcha a little bit more confidence going out there for nine more outs. Well, after the little conference and shoelace tying in the circle, Josie Marin ready to go again. Mascots, Bully and Bell, both in attendance. Not gonna lie, I didn't know there were two, but I've been educated. I'm always wondering on like the days where it's like 85, 90 plus, do the mascots get a little bit more compensation for the hotter days than <laughs> <laughs> the colder days? Bowie like and Bell on a, yeah, on a 90 degree day, I mean, that's, you're cooking in there. <laughs> it is about 82 degrees. Uh, Sam Ricketts was giving us that temperature update. Pretty warm afternoon after a cold start to the day. They look like they're doing all right. That's awesome. You can say another Pooney delay in this at bat ball here. Off of herself, I think they're just giving her a second. Mm. It's been a really choppy at bat though, just from a, a timing standpoint, both for the pitcher and the batter. Two to the count. No outs, two on for Tennessee. Well, it said 2-2, two, two, but apparently that was actually 3-2, and so it's now a walk which will load the bases. Yeah, what I think they're going to be bringing her back because... It was, was it a 2-2 two -two can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, All right. I feel like my scorebook had 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> That's what I had. But I love the confidence Pooney had going up the line. Yeah. Hey, she I'm sold here it. for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All Everyone right, was well, fooled. This odd at bat continues. And it is now a full count. And we're not quite ready. Three, two for Marin. Hit into the outfield. One runner coming home. There won't be a play at the plate. Tennessee adding to their lead. The runner at third, though, is out. So maybe a little too ambitious. The Mississippi State defense at least able to take care of one. When Zayda Pooney just hits this pretty hard through the 5-6 hole, I was actually surprised that the ball got cut off. I, I mean, I respect Kiki Malloy's speed, no doubt about it, but this was not a ball that was hit all the way to the warning track, I think, with St. Clair's arm. Why not go for a play at the plate? I think every run matters here. Yes, they got it out, and I, I can appreciate that, but I, I'm wondering why the ball was cut off. 
But speed will do that to you sometimes, right? Knowing that she's the fastest player potentially in the country. I, I give Kiki Malloy top three. So you know that maybe as Barbary saying, hey, she's rounded the bases, so. Ball popped up and right at the edge of the infield is caught by Edwards. Two down. And that will bring up Sophia Nugent, who had a two run blast back in the first and then was hit by a pitch in her second plate appearance in the third. One-0 pitch. That two-run home run, by the way, came with two outs in the first. So Nugent looking to do a little more two-out damage. Had a big three-run home run in the bottom of the sixth inning in the series finale against Georgia, the last series that Tennessee played prior to this one. Nugent, another transfer into the program coming from Oklahoma. She was a two-time national champion. <laughs> Nugent, you're on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Bottom of the fifth, down three. The time is now for this Mississippi State offense that has been the best in the SEC in a number of categories since conference play has started. Weslowski, Edwards, Hawkins. So six, seven, eight coming up. The trio of freshmen to start this fifth inning for Mississippi State. Still really good corners by Peyton Gottschall. Coach Karen Weekly said last weekend when we were asking about just where Gottschall's at, she says she's throwing the best that she really ever has. Only give up that one run on Saturday to Georgia and ended up losing, but she's just been spot on with location, using her defense well. Riley West having her back out there in left field. West making the grab to retire Wesolowski. So now Kylie Edwards, the freshman shortstop, will come to the plate. Freshman out of Waldron, Indiana, one of the top ranked infielders in her class. Another pop up though, and Gotchel's really making it easy on her fielders, isn't she? Whether it's outfield or infield to get the out. Yeah. Yeah, she's doing a really good job. I mean, the success of pitchers does come down to the location piece. When you miss, great hitting teams exploit you. And I think that's the one thing that I've really noticed and respected about Gottschall's game today. Just hits really good tight corners. She's not missing over the heart of the plate. And that's sometimes a different approach as a hitter where you can step in knowing, hey, there's a good chance that a pitcher is going to miss one or two times in an A-B over the heart of the plate. And I can't miss that but you're not seeing Gottschall miss and these hitters are getting jammed up and swinging at pitches that they really can't do a whole lot with one one the count to Salem Hawkins but it's the adjustments for me, for those right-handed hitters, knowing, hey, how many balls are we getting jammed up with on that inner half? Even when maybe you're off the plate a little bit, but it's being able to know, hey, I might not be comfortable wanting to hit a ball at 65 miles an hour with great spot location and spin, but 
I have to be able to make the adjustment as a hitter or hey, I'm going to potentially take a pitch or two on the inner half, but I'm going to be ready for that curveball that she's going to throw where she doesn't spin it too far off the plate, oh, too. She keeps it somewhat close where you can try to really focus in on hitting it to the right side. That pitch right there. Hawkins able to stretch out and get a piece of it. Finally, a bit away from the body, and she took advantage. Well, and that's what you have to do with that pitch on the outer half. You're, I mean, you can try to go oppo taco all day, ding dong to the right side, but if you're able to <laughs> just take it right back up the middle with some good pop and barrel it up, see it a little bit deeper in the count, and that's exactly what Hawkins did. That was a good at bat. We're at the bottom of the order for Mississippi State. Looks like a change is coming. Lexi Sosa, the grad transfer from UCLA, getting warm. And she will step on in place of Briley St. Clair. Ooh, that's the one to crush. Hawkins. Looking for a little help to get around the bases. The Bulldogs needing a little bit of that two out magic from Sosa off the bench. Hasn't had that many at bats on the season. The average looks good, 429, but just seven at bats, three hits in those seven. Well, and that defensive swing on the inner half. Now, as if I'm Peyton and Gottschall, I go, that opens up the upper part of the zone to me, and it opens up that curveball that I can mix whichever one I want to go with. Goes back up and climbs the ladder. And if I was Sosa right now, I would be assuming something on the outer half, saying, hey, I've seen her have success on the righties by really coming in on the hands and then spreading the zone and going away. So that would be my game plan if I was stepping in the box right now, kind of two-strike approach, trying to hit it to the right side. Sosa reaching out, staying alive. But the hard part about Peyton Gottschall is, okay, hey, we're at a one-two count. I, I've, I've worked it, but is she going to go back curveball now, or is she going to climb the ladder, and is she going to go with that rise ball? Because we've seen some big swings and misses on that pitch where she's really climbed the ladder. I wouldn't be opposed to a pitch that is potentially even a little bit higher. Like throw it where it's at the eyes and breaking higher than Sosa, especially with this being the seventh pitch of the at-bat. I always want to kind of look at it as the pitcher mentality. Hey, she's coming off the bench. She's cold. I'm warm. I should own this piece. And she does. Just like that? <laughs> Just like that. Jeff of the sixth inning, Tennessee has been in command since the first, although still just a three-run lead, 4-1 our score as we start off the sixth. Jen Hildreth, Danielle Laurie, happy to have you along with us for this game this afternoon. Mississippi State picking up the big win in the series opener last night that have been trailing since the first, as they did Yesterday, by the way, Tennessee did take the lead in the top of the first before wind up losing. That'd be the only one they would score. It was 9-1, a five-inning run rule victory for the Bulldogs. Different story so far today. And sometimes those games that you lose by a pretty large margin are the ones that kind of gut check you and, and allow for what you know, Coach Karen Weekly said, like, you got to respect the game, right? Like, the game doesn't know who's supposed to win. Based on the the data and the standings, yeah, Tennessee's supposed to win, but you have to go out there and play to prove it. And yesterday, Mississippi State just played better, and that's why they came out on the other side. There was this different confidence that they had that Tennessee didn't, and it kind of seemed like they were on their heels, and not to, to beat a dead horse, but like I said, I wasn't expecting a run rule at all this weekend um, when you have these two teams match up, but Mississippi State was a really fun team to, to watch yesterday. 
a lot of energy. Freshmen are just on fire up the middle. So uh, Riley Hull has come in at first base for the Bulldogs. It's a player they go to pretty frequently defensively. Junior out of Kentucky. Meanwhile, Destiny Rodriguez leading off the inning for Tennessee had the full count. It'll stay full. And a heck of an average at a 3-2 count. I mean, she hits at a 444 clip when she gets to 3-2. Dangerous if you're a pitcher, knowing that majority of the time she's coming up big in those deep counts that she works. Rodriguez hit into one of two double plays that this Mississippi State defense has turned in this game already. She did that in her last at bat back in the third. Eighth pitch of the at bat on the way from Josie Marin. Rodriguez trying to make something of it, nothing doing. She is sat down for the first out of the inning. And the importance for Mississippi State this inning to have a good clean inning and go back in, try to get some momentum. Going with six outs left. That's just the second time in this game that Tennessee has not gotten their leadoff batter aboard in an inning. Taylor Panel now up at the plate. Singled in her last at bat, struck out looking first time around against Marin. Duo pitch. Panel fouls it into the dugout. First two batters really making Marin work here in the sixth. She just continues to keep pumping that same spot. And why wouldn't you, right? When you're kind of getting those defensive hacks. But now to me, a swing like that on the inner half kind of opens up potentially throwing that drop on the outer half and being able to work, hey, I've really thrown a good amount of pitches in on panel's hands, maybe something low and away. Driven up the middle, panel will be aboard with the base hit. That's a really good job by Taylor Panel, she battled almost like uncomfortable looking swings on the inner half, right? But then was ready for a pitch that was left up in the zone. I think Marin has to throw this ball lower based on her seeing a ton of pitches, but it's left up and Panel doesn't, doesn't miss it. She punches it right back up the middle. Good hard hit. It's a good AB. One on, one out for Julia Katsoyanopoulos. First baseman sees the first pitch in for a strike. It's got to be one of the most monosyllabic, not mono, multiple syllabic last names in the SEC. <laughs> I really prepare for that one. Has that Italian bloodline for sure. C competed in those 2020 Olympics with the Italian national team. Yeah, Italian and Greek. Her dad has the Greek, her mom with the Italian. Yeah. 
One one count. In the dirt and foul. Well, I'm guessing there's something on the bottom of that sign that would said how much he doesn't like Rocky Top, being that that is very clearly a Mississippi State fan. Rocky Flop, thank you. I wondered. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Raise it high. It's quite the detailed banner he has there. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean, you know, I appreciate all arts and crafts. <laughs> I'll play on words as well. Trying to fire this Bulldog team up. They've been playing catch up throughout this game and these top bottom two hitters, excuse me, in the order for Tennessee haven't been able to get in on the party very much. Marin has had her way with Katsoyanopoulos and Miller thus far. Josie Marin going on her 100th pitch of the day. Big swing and gets the strikeout for out number two. Hardest pitch to hit, in my opinion, is pitchers that throw those elite drop balls that just spin down. It is so hard. Sometimes, at least when you're facing rise ball pitchers and that's their money pitch, they'll miss or you're able to kind of elevate and celebrate mentality. But man, those drop ball pitchers are tricky because you got to move around potentially in the box a little bit to try to adjust, make her bring it up. Sixth strikeout on the day for Marin and That'll bring up the shortstop, Laura Mueller. Boy, she was having a heck of a month coming into this series. Over the last month, she led the Tennessee team with a 432 average, seven home runs. That included a game against Missouri State where she went three for three, and all three of those hits were home runs. Didn't have the greatest series against Georgia, though. Just one hit in that series to get walked four times. And Tennessee, remember, at the top of the SEC at the moment, the Lady Balls have yet to lose an SEC series this season. They started off 8 and 0 in conference play for the first time in program history. Went 20 and one overall in the month of March. Pop up, I'll bring it two and two. Even the dogs out enjoying a beautiful day at the ballpark. Can't He's got an obstructive view. <laughs> yeah. Hope he paid less for that ticket. I'd like to see an interaction with the mascots. See what the puppy would do. <laughs> I think my dogs would be totally freaked out. Yeah. <laughs> High hopes for this Tennessee team this year. Coming on the road in Starkville, getting a tough environment, dogs in all. And certainly felt the bite from the Bulldogs in game one. But have bounced back strong here in game two. 4 1 lead, one on, one out, bottom of the six, bottom of the lineup with Mueller. And on we go. And Tennessee making Marin work and throw a lot of pitches, a six inning, the most that she's thrown. They've worked to really deep counts, but Marin has still done a good job of hitting good location, spinning the pitches well. 27th pitch of this inning coming for Marin.
She'll need at least one more. I may have said one out a moment ago. Apologies. It is two outs with that strikeout. So panel on first, two outs up on the board. And that sun bearing down in Starkville this afternoon in the 80s for this game two matchup. Not sure Marin has it in her, but I'd love to see her sneak a change here that she could locate for a strike at 3-2. She hasn't had to change speeds a ton as the game has gone on, but wouldn't it be something? Another foul tip. Miller will live to see another day. A transfer from Middle Tennessee. Quite a couple of seasons there. Single season record, runs, bases, RBI last year. Now joining this Tennessee team. Full count pitch, pops it up. Finally, Mueller is retired, and that will. Seen her do it 74% of the time. She's taken a pitch, and it's the one thing that always blows my mind because. You don't get very many strikes from a pitcher, so when you get that like, ooh, right over the heart of the dish and we're taking it, you may not see a pitch like that again. Sacco swinging at the second offering. Now she's quickly in an 0-2 hole. But you're right, top of the order. This is the moment for Mississippi State trying to make something happen. Big opportunity with this series. Slapped down by Sacco using her speed, but not quite enough. Tennessee defense up to the task. That's a good play by Mueller. She has to go to her glove side and kind of throw off the run a little bit and get enough juice behind it, knowing that Sacco has some good speed up the line. That's a really good leadoff out for Tennessee. When you get a player like Sacco on base right out of the gate, pumps everyone else up and gives them that confidence stepping in the box. So good leadoff out for 10 for Tennessee, excuse me. Nadia Barbary now up the plate, sophomore out of Douglasville, Georgia. Struck out, flew out in her first two plate appearances. Puts this one in the air as well. West on the run from left field. She has it, two down. That's really the difference maker when you think about it. When you look at the, the pitch count for someone like Josie Marin, and then you look at the pitch count for, for Gottschall, she's had to throw less pitches because we've seen some hitters get themselves out early in the count, and that's a really quick inning for Peyton. Tomorrow, you can find that on the ESPN app at 12 p.m. Central, 1 Eastern. We're at the top of the Tennessee order to start off the seventh, and a player who has reached every time she's come to the plate. Welcome back, Kiki Malloy. You were missed <laughs> that series that you were gone against Georgia. When we were asking Coach Karen Weekly just about her relationship with Kiki, and she said, you know the one thing I'm going to miss the most? She said every time that we're in the coach's offices and she comes through those doors. She always makes a pit stop in my office and sits and chats. She goes, I really appreciate that time with her. And she does it again. Malloy aboard with her third single of the day. And, and you could have had someone like Kiki Malloy who was going into her fifth year transfer out and go somewhere else for her COVID year. And she's decided to stay at Tennessee. And I, and I think that just goes to show, number one, how loyal she is, but number two, how important this program is to her and how much someone like Karen Weekly and the Weeklies have really kind of helped change her life a little bit in the best way. And um, that's a relationship that, you know, player to coach relationship is so, so important because it helps give you those tools for the next phase of your life as well, right? Like when you're graduating and you can't play softball at the collegiate level anymore, obviously someone like Kiki Malloy has options. She could play with 
Team USA if she wanted. There's a lot of different ways, but you say goodbye to this just chapter of your life that you work your entire childhood to try to get. It's almost, you know, the saddest part about it. Um, and I know coaches feel that same way, right? It's like they're yeah. saying goodbye to their to their kids that they've had for the last four or five years, and then they're making their way on into the real world. What an impact Kiki Malloy has made in her time with this Tennessee program. This ball skips away. You can bet she's on her way. Oh, yeah, she's already over second looking for third. 20 of 22 on stolen bases on the season coming into this game. All-American last year, member of the Women's College World Series All-Tournament team. Won the Tennessee Torchbearer Award, which is the highest honor that a, a student can receive at Tennessee. And the hits keep on coming. This one over the wall. Boo says bye-bye and gives Tennessee two more. One of the hottest hitters on Tennessee right now is Boo Gibson, and this pitch is elevated left up over the plate. Seventh home run of the season. Wow, would love to know the exit velo off that pitch. Really pretty swing. Dead center. Tennessee bouncing. Gets her first look at the pitch from Delaney Everett. In for a strike. Right out of the gate, just throwing her heater on the hands. No issue throwing the curveball in. You see Zeta Pooney, who actually backed off the plate a little bit, knowing Everett will come in. Got away a bit off the glove. Blaine behind the plate. Everett right down the middle. Strike two. pitch struck her out good start for the freshman it's almost seemed like a little bit of like a curve rise gets elevated up in the zone that's a statement being able to come in and strike out Zeta Pooney I mean late as can be definite differences in speeds from Josie Marin to Delaney Everett One down now, Riley West up at the plate. Had an RBI double in the first inning. Struck out, popped up after that. When you look at someone like Delaney Everett, you kind of look at like the future of the program as well, right? With Aspen Wesley being a senior, Marin going into her junior year next year, she's going to be a player that's going to be important to help kind of carry that workload. And it's moments like this where you you gain that confidence going up against a, a Tennessee offense, right? Yeah, you're down 6-1, but it comes down to crossing those lines and working on the things you do with your pitching coach, Taryn Mowat McKinney, and being able to execute big pitches and big moments. And those are all kind of things that start to build up that mental piggy bank where you gain that confidence from 
especially when you're playing in some of those big games or when your number is called with the game on the line. What have I done to allow myself to feel confident going into that moment? But it's about giving the freshman opportunities. Yeah, it's such a good point. And that strike call gets a full count on West. Delaney Everett third on this Mississippi State team in appearances in the circle. Behind Marin and Wesley. It is chopped into right field, bounces down in front of Bernie. So West getting the better of that matchup in the end. Sophia Nugent showed her home run power earlier, blasting one out in the first inning, her eighth home run of the season. Drives this ball and it is foul down that right field line. We got a chance to talk with Coach Weekly prior to this game kicking off. We just kind of asked her, was there a game throughout this season that's really stood out to you? She said, you know, Clearwater, obviously a couple games got washed out, but we lost a couple really close one-run ball games. But I think the big game for them was this year going up against Clemson. She said that's where we really learned a lot about our team, being able to go into extra innings against someone like Valerie Cagle, National Player of the Year from last year. It was also the game that Riley West ended up pulling her hamstring when she was rounding second. And this will give you a little bit of an angle, but what I want you to watch is as soon as she crosses second base, you see her kind of like tweak or fall a little bit there and go down. And Karen Weekly's like, why are you not running hard? And she slides <laughs> in and she actually takes a really long time to get up. And she was out for a couple weeks, Coach Weekly yeah. said. And she said, if there was a moment that showed one of the most selfless teammates that we've had, it was Riley West running on a pulled hamstring, <laughs> knowing she was the winning run. Selfless and toughness, right? <laughs> Both of those things embodied right there in Riley West, and that being one of the defining factors I love when Coach Weekly told us that story and reminded us of that moment of just what this team is made of this year for Tennessee. And she had also mentioned last weekend, that Georgia weekend, and that come from behind win against Georgia on Sunday. And they lost that heartbreaker with Peyton Gottschall in the circle Saturday. She threw an absolute gem, gave up one run, lost that ball game, but they came from behind on Sunday and won. And that was a big statement for Tennessee last weekend. A freshman making a little bit of a statement for herself here, Delaney Everett, since coming in. When climbing the ladder with confidence, I think that to me is so impressive, right? Like we can't beat hitters on one plane anymore. As pitchers, you just can't do it. If you can change speeds and go up side to side with a good mix of down, you can have success because there's a lot more tools in the toolbox than one or two pitches. And I think it's being able to make sure, hey, we can establish that strike zone early. What pitch can I get for strikes? Can I get ahead of these types of hitters? And then can I start to toy around a little bit and spin pitches to my advantage? And that's what you saw that last ups with strikeout on the rise ball. And for the most part, usually I can complain about the zone once, once a game, but I actually haven't <laughs> felt that to be necessary at all today. Bobbled ball, it is thrown and then dropped. So West scoots over to second safely. And I say that just because we know hitting has gotten a whole lot better at times than pitching with everything that's out there. But to me, the best umpires are the ones where you don't even notice that they're there, right? They're just consistent with calling the balls and the strikes. 
And I feel like that's what we've really seen from Shane Jackson behind the plate today. He's done a really good job of being consistent and giving a fair little bit off the plate, you know, half a ball. I, I respect that. And I think it's important for pitchers to get corners, especially this day and age of where we're at in the college game. Whoa, that one well out of the reach of Blaine behind the plate. But I appreciate that, Danielle, and I'm sure <laughs> that the umpires appreciate it too. Look, she may, she may get on us a little bit when she doesn't agree on the strike zone, but it's important too to recognize when a job is well done. Pitch runner, as Rodriguez walked on that pitch, and now she will be replaced. Number 50 out there to pinch run is Jackie Kirkpatrick, sophomore out of Moore, Oklahoma. Runners on the corners now. And this is panel spot in the lineup, but there was actually a defensive change in the outfield the last half inning. So this is Alana Leach, 5'6 freshman out of the Woodlands, Texas. Both she and her twin sister Gabby joining the Tennessee program this year. And you know that Leach name if you know Tennessee softball, a family of softball players, Aubrey, Kelsey, and now the twins. And the lone lefty. Lefty, lefty matchup, especially coming off the bench. It's that's a tough task as a pinch hitter. As you pointed out, no lefties in that starting lineup for Tennessee. And strike out the result. Delaney Everett. Three strikeouts, but she Peyton Gottschall has been pitching. She as confident as ever, and she's just been throwing so well from the jump of this game, and it obviously helps when your team jumps out in the first inning and puts up a three spot. I think that gives you some extra confidence going into the game, but just knowing how close of a ball game she can pitch and the ones that she's been involved in, she's just always rock solid no matter what the score is, and I think that's the one piece that is so important for pitchers is just that consistency. Blaine watching this, making sure there's no chance of it being caught as it heads out of play. Jessie's in her first year with the Mississippi State program, spent her first two years with the Auburn Tigers. And if you're looking for the Tennessee LSU baseball game, you can find that on SEC Plus, the ESPN app. And we'll be headed there as soon as this one is over in Starkville. Tennessee, Gotcha, by the way. When she, when she gets those 0-2 counts, to me, she's just, she's dangerous. Those 0-2, 1-2 counts. I mean, 154 average at an 0-2 count. She's .068 at 0-2. So it's just, she's kind of the fierce pitcher when she does get ahead it's because she can just spot up pitches like that just <laughs> that really is the difference for young pitchers that are watching this game watch the location of the spot she's not missing but look at the corner that she's able to get on the inner half that's so impressive seventh strikeout for Peyton Gotchel. And now it looks like Mississippi State might just be turning to the bench mob to get a little action happening. Bottom of the seventh, Aquana Brownlee at the plate, takes the first pitch. She's going to have to hurry, won't make it in time. Rodriguez all over it for out number two. Well, tomorrow the Rally Cap crew will break down the one out. Come on, I was giving the... The bench mob, all kinds of love. We only got one pitch out of Brownlee, so <laughs> let's see what 
the Bulldogs can do now. They need something. They're not going to get it. It is popped up, and the series is tied. Tennessee.